This is an uh, introduction to arithmetic sequences and series for high level IB students. Uh, as we can see, first thing to look at is what the syllabus actually asks us to understand, which is here we go arithmetic sequence and series, the sum of finite arithmetic series, geometric sequences and series, and the sum of finite and infinite geometric series. Uh, plus a couple of other things. Um, today we're going to look at arithmetic sequences and series, uh, the first part of that. Uh, okay, so the first thing to think of is well, why do we need to know this? Um, I think it's worth understanding that at the heart of mathematics, uh, mathematicians uh, find rules to understand patterns. Uh, this chap here. Uh, Yitan Zhang um, has done research recently on the twin prime conjecture, uh, the conjecture that every uh, prime, or there's an infinite number of pairs of prime numbers which are, are two away from each other. Um, and it is this kind of like looking for sequences, looking for patterns, as I said, is the actual kind of heart of mathematics. Uh, okay, so. This is the key content. Uh, here we go. If the difference between two consecutive numbers is constant, then we have an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic progression. And so to give uh, a simple example for this, I've got the sequence three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we can see quite clearly that this is arithmetic because the common difference each time is plus two. Okay, so this is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, and, and there is a formula for working out the arithmetic sequence. So coming back to that same sequences before. Now you may already know a different way of working out the nth term for this but let's use this particular method it does make things a little bit easier when the calculations get more complicated. Okay so we look at this d is the common difference so d in this case is 2 we're adding 2 each time u1 is the first term or the first term is 3 so I can just put this straight into my formula uh, for un is equal to the first term, which is 3, plus n minus 1 times by common difference, which is 2. Okay, And if I simplify that, I'm going to end up with uh, 2n minus 1. And like I said, you could have probably worked that out a different method, but this particular method will help us later on. Okay, so that is an arithmetic sequence. And here we go, this is a slightly more difficult question, um, more likely to get as, a, as an IB high level question. Second term of the sequence is 15, the fifth term is 21, we find the common difference and the first term. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying, excuse me. Okay, I'm going to start by saying that uh, I've got u1, which I'm not sure what it is yet, um, plus something, and that will take me to the second term. So u1 plus d is going to be equal to 15. And the fifth term, or well, the fifth term is going to be the first term, plus four lots of d is going to be 21. Okay, and hopefully from there you can see that the method is just going to be simultaneous equations. If I do second equation, take away the first equation, I'll end up with 3d equals 6, therefore d equals 2. And now I find out what the d equals 2, I can put that straight back into that first equation, and therefore u1 equals 13. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward stuff.
Okay, and then next we move on to uh, arithmetic series. Now, a series is when we basically add the terms of a sequence. So again, coming back to what we had that before, we had uh, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, this is an arithmetic sequence. If, however, I actually wanted to add these terms together, this would become an arithmetic series. So the only difference between a sequence and a series is that in a series we add the terms together. Okay, and we can use this formula here. We have two versions of this formula. The top formula we can use if we do not know the last term. The second formula here is a bit easier and we can use that if we know the, the first term and the last term. Okay, as before, D is a common difference. U1 is the first term. Okay, so let's see if we can try using that formula. Okay, so if we use that formula, um, some of the first five terms, let's say we have the sequence as before, and let's have that as well. So we've got three, five, seven, 9 and 11. Okay, we start off by writing down the information. So U1, first term is 3. D, as before, is 2. And how many terms have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So N is equal to 5. Okay, so all I now need to do is to substitute that into the formula. So S5, the sum of the first five, two, five terms, is going to be n over 2, 2 times my u1, which is 3, plus 5 minus 1 times 2, close bracket. And again, Hopefully you can see that all I've done there is substitute substitute into this first first formula here. Okay, so n over two bracket two times u one plus n minus one times d. Okay, I've just substituted that formula in. Therefore, if I uh, if I worked out that, that would tell me that the sum of the first five terms is going to be 35. Now I can check if that's correct by actually adding up the first five terms. So if I actually did 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11, yep, I do get 35. Okay, so there we go. That is uh, how to find the sum of an arithmetic series. Okay, and let's just try. Uh, one more example, say for example I know the first and the last term, I can use the second formula which was s of n equals n over 2 u1 plus un. So say for example I wanted to sum an arithmetic series at the first term, so u1 the first term is 6, know that the last term is 27. And I know that there's eight terms. So this is the first term, this is the last term, uh, and well, there's eight terms in total, so that would be u of eight. So the sum of those terms is s of n equals eight over two, six plus 27. Okay, and again, if I work all that out, I should end up with 132. And basically what I've done there, um, if you actually worked backwards, um, the common difference each time there would be 3. So I'm basically doing 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 all the way up to plus 27. And if I do all that, I'll end up with 132.